Hallelujah. Thanks to the Lord. We have entered the last session of the book of Proverbs. So we would like to talk about wisdom regarding speech. How do we know a person is very wise? Think about this, right? How do you think how do you know a person is very wise? Usually it's from hearing his or her speech. If a person speaks something, oh, very wise, then you know that person is wise. Or you know a person, sometimes he can control his speech. He didn't speak like worthlessly. Then you know he is a wise person. So the book of Proverbs talks about speech. The power of speech can change fate. It can both tear down and to build up. Let's turn to Pope verse 11, verse 9. Alex Huang. Pope verse 11, 9. Is Alex here? Uh, Proverbs 11, verse 9. The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. 11. Almost 11, 11. Uh, uh, I'll see, buddy. Uh, by the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Thank you. So it is all about speech, especially verse 11. Through the mouth of the righteous, that the city was blessed, right? But the mouth of the wicked will destroy the city. So the power of speech can bring life or death. So if you want to be a wise person, if you want to build up, you need to speak wisely. And if you, if you are a fool, when, whenever you speak, you tear down. You know, some of the marriage, they fail because the husband and the wife, they tear down each other by their speech. Right? Some friendship are broken just because of the speech right some business deal were broken or some country go to war it's all start from the speech right so that's why just like what we've just read through knowledge the righteous escape right with the mouth the godless destroy their neighbor right yeah we have read that so we have to be very careful now, let's talk about some negative sides. What are the speech that we must avoid? We must avoid. The first one is lying. Well, lying is an abomination to God. Lying belongs to devil because devil is the first one to lie. It lies to Eve. 
and Adam tricked them to eat the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. So if anyone who lies or has the habit of lying, he belongs to the devil. He doesn't belong to God. Right? And the Gospel of John right, tells us the same thing. If somebody lies, actually, he's called devil his father. Let's turn to John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. Uh, Titus, please read. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Liar of the father of the liars. Demon or the devil is the father of all lies because he's the first one to lie. And if you have the habit of lying, not telling the truth, you belong to his camp, right? Sooner or later, he'll get you. So if you tell lies to our spouse, our parents, our friends, you will destroy the relationship once you were discovered, right? Nobody will trust you anymore. Your parent will not trust you if you lie to them. Your friend will not trust you if you lie to them. Your future spouse will not trust you when you lie to them because nobody trusts a liar. But how do I know if you say this again, it is true or not? So if you want to destroy your relationship with others, very simple, just tell them lies. And then you have no friends. Sooner or later, you have no husband, no wife ever because they cannot stand with you anymore, right? And even do business. In the job, you lie to your boss. You think that you want to cover your wrong, right? You, want to, you did something bad. You make a mistake, but you want to cover it up. You say, no, I didn't do it. It's not me, right? I didn't know. Okay, you can say all this, I didn't know, I don't, I don't know, whatever. But your boss will discover. Nowadays, there's CCTV, right? There's a video recording, and, and they bring up the video. It shows that actually you did it. And why do you lie? And then immediately you got fired. So lying is destructive for yourself, to you. You don't destroy only other person. Yeah, at the same time, you can destroy other person too. But lying destroy you, yourself. So hopefully, if we have the habit of telling lies, we have to pray. We have to pray to God that God, please help me to speak the truth, right? Speak the truth. Even I have to admit my mistakes. I have, to, I have to say it, right? Sometimes you can remain silent, just like your friend asks you something, you don't want to reply. Or some people ask you something very private, you don't want to talk about it. You say, I just don't want to talk about it. Right? It's not your business. Or I'm not ready to talk about it. You don't, you don't lie by just cover it up. You can choose to be silent, or you can choose not to talk about it. But you cannot tell lies. Right? Some people say, oh, it is okay to say white lies. The Bible didn't say white lies is okay. Lie is lies. Right? There's no white lie or black lies. Lie is lies. So don't have the habits of telling lies. Another destructive speech is flattery. Flattery is when you give someone compliments or praise, but it's not from your heart. Sometimes it's sarcastic. You want to make the first and people, yeah, I know you're the best, right? Or sometimes you pretend you are praising someone, but actually you, you, in your heart, you hate a person, right? Let's say if somebody beat you in the academic or beat you in the sport and your heart really hate a person, right? But you go there, yeah, you know, you did a good job. I'm so proud of you, right? This kind of flattery or... Sometimes you want to manipulate a person. You keep praising your friend. You keep praising someone just because you want to get recognition. Just want to, you want to be, people to like you so that you have friends. You know, some people, they like flattery words, right? They like to hear flattery words. So if you want to please them very easy, you, you say something flattery. Whatever you do is good, right? 
Oh, you people ask you, how do I look? Your friend asks, how, how do I look with a new dress? Even though you think it look ugly on you, right? But you say, beautiful, you know, beautiful on you. Why? Because your friend is rich. You flat, flatten them. They'll, they'll bring you for a free lunch. They'll give you gifts. This kind of thing is not good, right? You can remain silent sometimes. I don't know. Yeah. My taste is maybe different than you, right? But yeah. If you don't want to hurt a person by saying the truth, it look ugly on you, right? You can say, well, everybody have different tastes, right? <laughs> that may be more, more kind of wise. Or I don't know, maybe you can check on another person, right? I, I'm not really good at giving comments, right? But you don't flatten people, just we want to please the person. Uh, the Bible said, let's turn to Proverbs 26, 28. Ephraim. Ephraim. 28. A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it. Flattering mouth works for them. Mm-hmm. So don't give a flattering tongue. Don't crush others, right? Now, another destructive word is gossip, especially, you know, sisters are prone more to this temptation. Brothers are more easily tempted by pornography, visual weaknesses. But sisters like gossip, right? You know, who buy the People magazine more? Who buy all this uh, gossip magazine? Usually it's not men, it's women. Women love to hear gossip and then they enjoy gossip and they spread gossip. Even in church, you know, girls are envy of each other usually. I don't know if you witness this in your local church. Girls are envies of each other. They like to compare. They like to compare, oh, which school you go? Oh, what, what clothes you wear? What family background? And they like to compare. And sometimes they like to talk gossip, hurting the friendship, right? Gossip betrays person and destroy friendship, right? If you have a friend, there's something you, you think he or she need to improve or she mess up something or she, she's not good at something or she make a mess on something. If you are his or her friend, you go to her face and find a good time to sit down and talk to her or him. But if you, instead of talking to the person, you go in the back and, and tell others about your friend. When a friend finds out, you get so hurt. Just like you, right? If people talk at your back, and then when you find out, you feel so hurt. Why don't you talk to me? I mean, what you spread may, may not even be true. But even if it's true, why don't you talk to me so that I can improve? Why are you talking at my back? Proverbs 9, uh, 17, verse 9. Brandon. Brendan Tyne. And Proverbs 17, verse 9. He who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates friends. If you keep repeating a matter to a friend again and again, or to repeat a matter in front of other people, you also destroy the relationship. So control our mouth, control our tongue, you know, but sometimes... Gossip, just like delicacy. Uh, the proverb tell us, proverb, just like something very delicacy. Just like people like to eat it and like to spread it. When people have, have time and they sit down, have tea, they, they spread gossip. But that is not good. We have to control our mouth. How do you show your character? How do you show character, true character? If people gossip, you know, people tell you, hey, you know what? I tell you a secret about so-and-so. What do you say now? If you are a fool, you say, yeah, I like it. Tell me, you know, oh, wow, that's bad, you know? And then you keep adding oil, vinegar, soy sauce. And then you start to tell other friends about this, right? Or sometimes some people tell you, hey, I tell you a secret, right? Don't ever tell any other person because you're my best friend. I tell you, you know, so-and-so, something happened to him or her. You know, actually, she was not the first one to tell you. Actually, somebody tell her, and then she promised she'll never tell anybody. And then now she's going to tell you. 
And if, if you are a gossip spreader, if you are fool, you go out and say the same thing. You know what? I just had something, but don't tell any other one, right? I just trust you so much. I want to tell you the secret of that person. You ruin the person, I tell you. Sometimes the gossip is just wrong. It's not the fact. It's not the truth. Right? Sometimes even true, the, the fact is even not the truth. Right? What you see, even with your own eyes, may not be the complete truth. But you keep spreading it out. If you keep spreading, you know, you're spreading what you saw, you think is true. But actually, it is wrong. You hurt, you destroy the person and you destroy your own character. So if you are godly, you are wise. If people offer you some gossip, try to get, drag you into the discussion, what should you say? You know what? Excuse me. Sorry. I, I don't think we should talk about that at the back of the person, right? Shouldn't, if you know something about it, shouldn't you go talk to him yourself, right? You talk to us. So we, if you discuss it here, it's not really helpful. Right? Especially if you have a weaker member, a member who doesn't really have strong faith or, or someone who is a truth seeker, heard about you, talk about gossip, it's even worse. So if you're wise, if people offer you gossip about someone else, you say, hey, why don't we stop talking about this, right? It's not edifying. Or maybe if you know something, we should talk, you should talk to the person directly so that he can prove. Right? But it takes courage. It takes courage to stop people talking gossip. That if you are wise, at least you would not be interested. Another thing that destroy, that bring destruction in our speech is cursing. Right. Cursing is bad, especially if someone curses his parents. Proverbs 2020. Christopher Wu. Uh, verse 20, whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out into deep darkness. Yes, if you curse even your father or mother, you'll be put to darkness. That means God will punish you, right? You'll see no light. And under the law of Moses, if you curse your parents openly, you'll be put to death. You'll be stoned to death. So don't ever curse your parents. But even, not only your parents, but don't even curse your friends. Right? Don't even curse your friend or your associate. Don't even curse your colleagues or your subordinates or anyone. You know, on our culture, if you look at movies, it's full of curse. Coarse languages. People use F word, N word, whatever words, very badly. So watch our mouths. I know especially for guys. For guys, they, they want to show that they, they are men. They are manly. Not only by showing their muscle. Sometimes they, they show this by their mouths, by their, by their speech, cursing people. Especially if you watch the movie, every five minutes you hear people cursing. So I recommend in order to in order to not be an inference, those kind of movie with coarse language, we should avoid it because otherwise, or your friends, if you have a friend who curse every 10 seconds, you should avoid them too, right? If possible. Of course, some, sometimes in a workplace, your, your colleague curse, you can, nothing you can do about it. But personally, if a, if a person curse, that means he has so much anger, so much void in his heart, right? So we should never follow them, the same thing. Now let's talk about some constructive word then. What are the words that we must say more, right? More and more words. Uh, of course, beside the destructive word, uh, I want to add one. One more is the dirty jokes. Another thing you should avoid, not only cursing, but dirty jokes. Jokes concerning other people's body, Jokes concerning other people, ethnicity, race, you should avoid. Jokes concerning sex, right? Dirty jokes. Using sex or sexual behavior, sexual organs. For jokes, especially among men, these dirty jokes, we should refrain from taking part of it. 
because the Bible clearly tells us, right? Those are not worthy. Those are not suiting for for Christians, uh, for us. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. Ian Yang. Ivan Yang. Sorry, Ivan Yang. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. Verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as it is fitting for saints. For neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Yes. Not only we should not commit fornication, but anything related to it is not godly. Dirty jokes. We should avoid. We should be framed. Because God is listening to what we speak every single day. Right. Now, constructive speech, there are many good ways, good speech we can speak. The first one is word of righteous, the mouth of the righteous. There's right mouth of the righteous, this means what is good, what is right. The, word, the words of the mouth of righteous mean they, they speak whatever they're pleasing to God. They speak something what is right. They are like well of life. They are like choice silver, and they can affect many people. They can bring good edification to many people, right? In Proverbs chapter 10, it talks about a few times the mouth of the righteous really bring life. And this bring life means spiritual life too. You can edify a person, encourage a person, right? And the pleasant words, encouraging words, the word of truth, the word of Nourishment can just like honeycomb, right? Let's turn to 16, 20, 24. Proverbs 16, 24. Hubert Huang. Uh, not here? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Claire Chen, Irvine. Which verse? 1624. Um, verse 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and hope to the bones. Yes. Imagine your speak, your speech, if it's according to God's word, according to encouragement, can bring so much nourishment, nourishment to people. You know, that is very meaningful. So, brother and sister, now train our mouth. Whatever we speak must be truthful, must be edifying, must be encouraging, must be comforting, right? Don't joke around. Don't joke around endlessly or don't make fun of people, of their weaknesses. Let's say if you see a person who is starter, starter in tongue, right? Even in church or, or, or at school, starter. Uh, started. Now, you, you, you speak okay, you speak normal, but what's the point and why you make fun of the person? The person already, you know, suffer. The person already suffer bullying or, or mocker from other, other students. But you, at the back, you make fun of it. God doesn't like it, right? Or some, someone who have a physical disability, right? And then at the, at the back, you make fun of the person. It's not good. But rather, as a Christian, we should go to the person, hey, how can I help you? Can I be your friend? And then Jesus will like you. Right. And then encourage the people who need encouragement, for, even for brothers or sisters, or even from the friends outside. So hopefully our mouth can be edifying. Sometimes timely words is also very important. In due season, when a person needs encouragement, you know how to encourage them, right? Let's, let's read 1523. Uh, Matthias 2. Verse 23. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. A word spoken in due season, 
how good it is, right? What I mean, due season, you know, wisdom is to know when to speak and when not to speak. Sometimes you better not speak and be silent, but sometimes you need to speak. But you speak the right thing in the right timing, the right tone, the right length. Wow, that need wisdom. Let's say someone is very sad, downcast, and then you go to the person and say, "Hey, do you know recently I saw a very good comedy, really, really funny. Do you want? Hey, people are sad. Why you talk about something like this, right? People are sad. Maybe they need you to ask them, "Hey, how are you doing? Is there anything you can help? Why you look so downcast?" But you keep talking about your own achievement to a person who is very just so disappointed, just failed his test. And then you go to tell him that, you know what? I got a 900, no, 99%, right? What's that for, right? Why you want to say this in front of a person who doesn't have it? So wisdom is timely words. Yeah, even though what you said is true, you have achievement, you're happy, you saw something funny, but in front of a person who is mourning, you shouldn't be saying all these things, right? So that's why we need God to give us wisdom. When to say what, and in what tone, what kind of what word choice? Even the word choice. What are the right words to describe it? You know, in order to train our speech, that's why you need to read a lot. You know, you use different words precisely. But of course, that is wisdom. Ask God to give us and well thought words before you think, but before you say something, think it twice, think it three times. Whether you should say this or is or not, let's read fifteen verse twenty eight. Um, Brandon Choi. Brandon Choi. No, he's not here. Jeremiah Ho. Fifteen twenty eight. The heart of the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. Mm -hmm. Well thought words. Even if you want to say something, but think, especially when you are very angry, when you are super angry, you want to say something. Wow, you better be slower, because when you are angry, usually you say something which is not thoughtful. Because when you are super angry, just like your blood pressure come up, usually you lose control of careful, think, careful thinking. When you say something, you cannot get it back. You now people say in Chinese idiom, right? Just like water, pour to the sea. Ah, 讲话好像泼出去的水 Water just like, I mean, words just like water. You lash out or pour out, you cannot take it back. You cannot curse people and say something really hurtful and say, you know, sorry. Pretend I never said this, right? Okay. No, you cannot pretend. The water poured out cannot be taken it back. Or just like you punch a wall, a dry wall, you make a hole. The hole is there, even though you 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 withdraw your 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 fist, right? The hole is there. The damage is done. Especially when you're angry, you say something very hurtful. Oh, damage the relationship. So it's better when you're angry, just walk away. Don't say anything for a while. Have a walk outside. Or just calm down yourself. Don't say some careless words when you're angry. If you really want to say something afterwards, think it through.、Mm, how should I put it? Talk slowly. Talk in a calm way. I know it's difficult, right? Especially for young person. But this is we have to learn. We have to train ourselves. Should we? Should I really say this word? Should I really say this joke? Is it appropriate when I say this? When I. When I say something, what will be the consequences? Will I just unleash my anger, or will I destroy someone? So think about, think it three times before we say something, especially in a very important situation. You don't want to make make your speech to get into trouble. Now I want to supplement one thing. Now that young people don't speak that much, do you know why? They type. Young people typing or writing in Twitter, in Facebook. Now there are a lot of people don't young people don't talk, but they can write a lot on the internet. 
l I really suggest you as a young person develop your verbal skill. Talk to friends more than just typing all the time or texting, because verbal skill is very important for your future, holy work or or worldly work or communication in your physical job in the world. Texting is not formal, right? Cannot replace your verbal communication. So I strongly suggest young people, you know. Every now, now and then, have time, you know, with church friends. You know, just just have a tea together, coffee together, hang out together, just talk, right? Learn to talk to brothers or sisters, you know, as a friend level. Share your thoughts. You now, a lot of people try to avoid talking, but just keep typing. Then your your talking capability will decrease over time. Now, but for some people, they they like typing. They they forget that typing in the internet also is a kind of speech. Whatever you share on the internet never disappear. Some people unleash the anger in the internet in the social media. That will backfire them in the future, right? You know, even some politicians, some people very famous, they share something in Twitter or the social media, but they regretted it later. And some of them even have to resign because they make improper jokes, or racial, racist、uh, remarks, or dirty jokes. So they forget texting in the internet, sharing anything online is also a speech, and that will backfire you even more than your words. Because more than your words, say something right, people may not have recorded. It. But when you say share something on the internet, everybody see it, and it's forever. You cannot really take it down. So be very careful of your speech online. Yeah, don't think it is just funny and easy, right? Control words. Also, we have to control our tongue. Wow, but I want don't want to share too much about that. But、uh, yeah, okay. So in conclusion about words, in conclusion about words, we have to avoid harm to ourselves and to others. If we speak value good words, we can help ourselves and others. But if we do not control our tongue, it will destroy your relationship. Even with God, your relationship with God really about your tongue. Let's turn to Colossians four six. Colossians four six. Chloe Huang. Um. Verse six: Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Underline this verse: Seasoned with grace. You know, seasoning is very important, right? When you eat a steak, if you don't put salt, the text tailors. Just a little bit of salt will make the food or the steak wow, taste really well. Same when you say something, season it with grace. What does it mean? What does it mean? Season with grace. You know, your speech will affect your your fate in the future. If you can talk, if you can, if you're always thankful. Let's say if a person always smile, always say thank you, always say please, always say oh you're very welcome. This kind of words you always say this. You know people like you. People like you instead of say oh、uh, yeah okay. Um. Oh. No, some young people. I know some young people don't like to talking nowadays, right? But maybe you're not in the mood of talking. Okay. Ah.、Uh, explain to your parents, or to your siblings, right? Or the church elders. Sometimes, some young children, some young people in the church, they see the elders, preachers, deacons, or the uncle, auntie pass by on Sabbath day. They just see them as air, air, transparent. They don't say hi. They. Don't even say hi. They just want oh, oh, oh go to. I want to walk away. I don't want to get myself into trouble. No, they are not finding yourself trouble. If your mouth is always sweet, like hey, uncle, good morning, auntie, hallelujah, pastor, good morning, elder. Oh, when people help you something, you always say thank you so much. Smile. You know that bring only good thing to you in the future. I tell you, they only bring you if you season your speech with grace. 
it always bring good fortune to you. It's not fortune, it's blessing, right? Even you don't like something, but you still smile. Right? So, oh, okay, thank you, auntie, but I know I don't really need it right now, but thank you very much, right? Right, so this kind of thing you have to learn, right? Don't be angry, don't be just lashing out people, season your word with grace. You know what, I don't really like it, but thank you. Thank you anyway. So this is the season with grace. So I hope that all of us, right, after learning Proverbs every day, we kind of think about, am I talking to people in a nice way, in a gracious manner? So that is very important. Now, lastly, the last 10 minutes, I would like to share about the, uh, Chapter 31 talks about good women in the Bible, in the Proverbs. We are share a lot about bad women in the Bible. Actually, for men, for every man, your life, your well-being is tied to women. For everyone, right? Including sister, because your mother shaped you. For sisters, your mother shaped you so much, more than your father. Even for men, your mother also shaped you very much. But for men, your fate, your future is tied to another woman who is your, who will be your future wife. So for men, especially for men, of course, sisters are the same. If you marry the wrong guy, you also suffer, right? But for men, if you marry the wrong woman, if you marry the woman with, without wisdom, immoral or foolish or without wisdom, your life will be destroyed. So the last chapter in the book of Proverbs talk about woman, but no more talking about immoral woman or unwise woman, but talk about wise woman. So for every man, I think in NYTS, most of the brothers are single, right? Yeah. You know, you're a very important brother. If one brother married a moral woman or outsider, there's been one sister in the church who may be losing a chance of meeting a brother, right? Especially now we have more sister. I look at the name, name, name sheet and also usually in the seminars, there's more sister than brother. If one brother marry an outsider, he destroy himself. Also, he deprive our sister of one chance of meeting one good brother. So brother, don't, don't mess up in marriage in the future. Don't go to find outsiders. It's, you're hurting yourself and others. You know, but on the Bible, there are so many bad women. I don't have time to count everyone, uh, but there are some very famous, uh, very famous bad women who are who. Cool. I hope I have 10 more sessions, but I only have 10 minutes. Okay, so in the Bible, there are some bad women, the Dalila, right? The woman which enticed Samson. We, you must know about her, right? She tempted Samson of a secret, right? Dalila, and then Paul's first wife would try to to try to entice Joseph, Jezebel, the evil queen. If not because of that evil queen, King Ahab would not be that bad. Okay? But that evil woman really spoiled the king. So endless, right? Endless. Uh, now let's look at the Proverbs. The last 10 minutes, talk about the Proverbs, talk about a good woman. What are the characteristics of a wise wife? Now, for our church sister, we have the goal of learning from that wise woman, wise wife. And for the brother, don't just look at the outside appearances. Of course, it's a bonus, but it's not a must. I know some brothers, when I ask them, what do you want in the future wife? It's all attractive, beauty. You know, of course, everybody likes beautiful, beautiful things, beautiful person. But at the same time, you ask yourself, right? You, you want a beautiful wife, but look at the mirror yourself, right? Brothers, be realistic, okay? You say you want a beautiful woman, okay? But look at yourself in the mirror. Are you like Brad Pitt, right? Are you, do you look like a, 
George Clooney, you know, if you don't look like all those movie stars, then why you say you want a wife look like a movie star, right? So actually, to be honest, most of our look are just average, right? Most of our look are just average, just like the bell curve, you know, the statistic bell curve. You know, statistic, you know, both extreme are very rare. Those are very, very beautiful, very rare. Those are very ugly, very rare, right? Most of us are falling in between. Most of us are just average. Even if one or two sisters are super beautiful, it's not your turn, okay, I tell you. The lineup of people going after just one or two person, right? You, it's not your turn, right? So don't be setting so high standard, brothers. Think, oh, I want everybody asking about the same person, one or two. No, of course, nothing wrong to be beautiful. If she has a good character too, it will be a bonus, right? But the character is actually the main thing. But the brothers, don't be deceived for the beauties. If all you want is beauty, very soon you'll go for outsiders. Because our church sister, they don't, actually they are beautiful, but they don't really like to put on makeup too much or dress themselves too much, right? They want to be low profile. But the outside girl, they just want to be beautiful and attract your attention. So do not be deceived, right? Think of the wise woman you think about personally. First of all, think about your own mother. Do you think your mother is very wise, right? If you think your mother is very wise, thank God. She had a good upbringing to you and you learn from the good part of your mother, right? Look cannot be changed that much because we inherited, but character can be developed. Write it down, very important. Look cannot be changed because what your mother gives you, the genes, the look, the height, the body shape cannot change much, right? But the character can be developed. And for brothers, understand this, right? Look can be changed over time because your wife, get older after having kids will also the shape will be different but the character is what attracts you in the long term so sister you must develop character and brother we must focus on character too not just on the appearances now um for you, when you think about a wise woman, you can have your own list of description. Those are very good, knowledgeable, hospitable, charitable, loving, not self-control kind. The list can go on and on and on. But just we want to look at chapter 31 about the list of why uh, good women, right? Good women, good wives. Let's read verse 10 to 12. Eris Huang. And a wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Now, brothers, look at this, right? If you had a good wife, Godly character. The Bible didn't say a beautiful wife can bring you good life in the future. But the Bible said a woman of godly or noble character. You have to pray that God give you a woman of godly character, noble character. Right? And she's worth more than rubies, more than diamonds. Right? And her husband has full confidence in her and you lack nothing. Because it will bring you good. So for men, your future wife need to be a godly woman. If not, you'll be in trouble. You'll lack so much. Yeah, it may be beautiful on the surface for a while, but after a while, you get so tired of her because the look, every day the same person, you get boring, right? Just like guys, right? You know, some guys, they put a poster of a movie star on their locker in the old days. Right, but after a few weeks, after a few months, you want to change the, 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 the poster because the same person you look at it once you feel bored. If the character is not good, after a while you get bored and you cannot stand the, the person. Okay, so 
what is the characteristic of a godly woman? Now, if you have time, you read tonight, especially sister, you can think about this. And brother, also you study deeply about this, right? From verse 13 to 27, you to describe what a woman of noble character can bring to a husband. Now, I summarize, there are a few things that really helpful, right? A, a woman of noble character, go bless her and she have this character. First, she is very capable. She is not just sitting there and, and watch Korean movie, all right? Some women, they don't know how, what to do, do work in the house or didn't, they didn't go out to work. Even they stay home, they don't take care of the house, right? Every, every day they just stay home, watch K-pop, right? Or Korean drama. No, a, a woman is not like this. A woman who can help her husband, who is very capable. So you learn the things, you learn the things you need to, to know and help the family, whether it's housework or business or anything. And she is a very eager and willing worker, right? She doesn't have to be told what to do. She always knows mm, when times comes, how to take care of whom, what needs to be done. Wow. She will be a resourceful woman. She knows how to get resources, right? Even though life is tough at the beginning, but she knows how to grab resources to develop the family, to help her husband. Uh, whether it's making clothing resources or in the field or buy land or cooking or anything. She's very resourceful. But another good character of a godly wife is diligence. Diligence means hardworking. Hardworking. Always working nonstop to help the family. You know, uh, no, husband, if you have this kind of wife, you really have to cherish her. You really have to take care of her. And then she's a provider, everyone in her care. She not only take care of you, not only take care of the children, but when your parents get old, she also help, right? Now, this is not easy. Financially, she's also very prudent. She's very conscientious. What does it mean? She will not be a big spender. Just ask you to buy bags, buy buyman, buy what and this and that. She know how to invest. She know how to make long-term financial planning. Long-term financial planning. So the, the, the man will not be broke. The man will not be, oh, because the wife is a spender. You know, always want jewel, always want expensive clothes, always want vacation, this and that. And then, and then, and then there's nothing left in the bank. The wife even know how to invest or long-term planning. So the husband said, oh yeah, do we have that money? The wife said, yeah, you know what? We save up and we have some investment and, and we are okay, don't worry. Even you are out of job for a few months, you know, we got it covered. Wow, the husband is so thankful for that, right? And she is strong, emotionally strong, not physically. Well, maybe physically too, right? But of course, you know, sometimes woman is too strong physically. The man doesn't like it, right? The man like the, the woman like the man. Hey, you are stronger. You do this, right? But the woman is strong mentally, tough mentally. Will not be, oh, you know, a little bit of things, get so panic, go freak out, you know, complain or cry whole day. You know, she able to manage her emotion. She's mentally strong. Mentally strong is very important. If a woman is very mentally weak, panic easily, complain, you know, get nervous, it's difficult to help the husband, right? She's strong, right? strong mentally. And of course, sometimes she, she can, if, if she has to endure a tough situation, she can do it. You know, I know some sister who went to missionary with uh, Africa. I remember more than, about 20 years ago, there were two sisters from UK went to Kenya with me and other deacons from the US. So four of us, we went there for a month or a few weeks. And the sister was very tough, right? We went to the village. There's no electricity, right? There's no light. And then we have to sleep on the ground. 
and there's so many mosquitoes, right? They have a room, we have a room, and then the toilet in the village is just a hole, right? There's no flash water, no light, no water flies everywhere. But they were so tough, they are prepared. They are not afraid of Africa or the heat or the, or the flies or the, or the dirty toilet. So you see, they just use it, just like we men use it, right? That there's, no, there's no tape water. And then we just, they, they were just given one basin of water and they wash the whole body from hair, the face, and then clothes, no, the body, and then they, they brush the teeth. Wow, they are so tough. They were brought up in the UK. I think, oh my dear, these sisters are tough, tougher than me. They are not afraid. But, but now there's some brother, brother are so weak. Oh, this is dirty. Oh, this is too hot. Oh, that is too difficult. You know, some women are even stronger than men. So sisters are tough, right? But of course, some sisters, you have to be careful. Do not be like, like a princess illness. There's a saying, 公主病, huh? oh, I'm not a princess. You know, I, don't, I cannot suffer. This food is terrible. Oh, that seat is horrible. Everything is terrible. Oh, princess? I don't know. Yeah, maybe if you marry a prince, you can live like a princess. But very few princes here, right? right? You need to have a tough life. When you marry, you have to assist your husband. You have to get your hand dirty. You have to do it. You have to do it, right? Compassionate and generous. So you can help people, not just self-centered or selfish. Now she prepare for the future so that her husband has no worry. And well-spoken of, wise and helpful words, good reputation in church and outside. Now, brothers, do you want to choose a woman very beautiful but doesn't have any of this? You can choose like a movie star type of face. If you're lucky, if you like you, I don't know. But have nothing of this. You have to do everything else yourself. Do you want this? Or do you choose a woman, godly, noble character? Even her look is average. But thank God the character is what God wants and what I want. And she has all these characters. Which one do you want to choose? Right? And of course, the most important is the faith for your next generation. So this concludes. And hopefully the test has a little bit more space. You can add one more question about how to choose your wife or the brothers. Right? And all these good characters, the 10 good characters, you have to memorize. And for sister, you have to work yourself so hard and get these good 10 good characters. In the future, you'll be so blessing for your husband, right? Okay, so this concludes our Proverbs. And hopefully, remember what I say in the day one, you got to read Proverbs every day, one chapter a day. Every month, you finish it once and you'll be much wiser than your friends and from other people. May God bless us and also may God guide your test. And remember the test, how much do you score doesn't really matter, right? Don't worry about the test. If you fail, it's okay. You just have to retake it, right? But you'll pass, I'm sure. But the real test come from whether you can put it into practice. Let's pray in silence. Amen.